Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Yesterday, uh, there was a game in the association between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets. Now, what's interesting is while that game was taking place, uh, the Clippers are also paying, playing against uh, the, Hornet, the Hornets. And both of those games were basically occurring uh, at the same time. So I was kind of following the score of the Lakers game. It looked like it was out of hand, like meaning the Lakers were winning the game. So I'm like, well, there's no real need to tune in. But something, to, uh, t- uh, something told me to tune in. So I tuned in in that third quarter. And I saw, was it third, late third, maybe late third, early fourth quarter, something like that. And I saw that LeBron was red hot. Um, and there was, I think the commentator said at that time he had hit like seven threes. I was like, damn, he's, he's red hot. Then as I'm watching the game, I see him <clears throat> basically, you know, dribble towards the left side of the, the left side of the, the court heading towards the baseline. And he basically just like falling out of bound three point shot fading out of bounds and he hit the shot and i was like damn son is in fuego right now uh and then a few seconds later the very next play on the opposite side of the court he comes up and he goes into a dribble move and he hits this step back three almost looking like he was going out of bounds and i was like god damn i almost posted about it actually uh on the channel but i was like um there's no real need but i but it was a hell of a performance and he finished that game uh, with 40 points on 76.5% shooting because he only missed four shots, uh, 90% from the three, 83% from the free throw line while still getting you seven rebounds, five assists, uh, and four turnovers. So it was it was a special game. And I knew just based on how social media and the internet works and news media works, I knew that this was going to be one of the big stories uh, today. So what happened? Undisputed releases the show, I mean, a segment, and it's the first segment, uh, and they're talking about the Lakers. And on the panel, you had Keyshawn, Paul Pierce, and Skip Bayless. Now, if you guys know, Paul Pierce recently came out and said if LeBron wins his first champ- fifth championship, excuse me, uh, then he should be considered the greatest player of all time. So when Paul was talking, no, excuse me, when Keyshawn was talking, Keyshawn was just basically saying, listen, we've never seen anybody look this good at 39. And he looked even better. Uh, than Michael Jordan, and in my to my surprise, Skip Bayless, who is a huge LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan supporter, actually was agreeing with Keyshawn on live TV, like actually agreeing with him. So what we want to do is want to play Skip Bayless publicly admitting, to my surprise, that he believes LeBron James is a better player at uh, 39 than he does Michael Jordan. Take a listen to Skip Bayless here. Yeah, it's extremely impressive. You know, Paul talked about all the statistics and all the different things that he's been able to accomplish and since the All-Star break, but you think about it, Skip, there's only two guys in the history of the NBA, 39 plus years old, to be able to do what he did last night. One is Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Yeah, but it, Michael wasn't even in the same. I was gonna, I was gonna say with this. I was gonna say that yeah. that 40 year old, 39 year old yeah. Michael Jordan. That was just like I don't know what it was. This LeBron looks like he can play another five years, six years, and doing the same thing. Agreed. So when you start to look at that, you look. Like, Things are getting better as you get older. Yeah. That, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Like, you, you, to your point, Michael at 39 or over had three 40 plus point games. Yeah. Now LeBron has two. But it was almost two. like those 40 point plus games was like, we're watching you because you Michael Jordan, so we're going to let you go to the cup. He wasn't hitting nine or 10 threes. No. It, it, it do a step backs in the corner and he, he and, was and not knocking him down. I give not, you I'm that. not taking anything away from Michael. No. I'm just saying at 39 years You're, old, it's impressive. You are correct. So then he goes to the bench. He gets a standing ovation, which was something for the yeah. Nets fans. It was almost like Madison Square Garden where yeah. they don't have their own. So when when yeah. somebody great comes to visit, they have to to sort of appreciate the and greatness the of the visiting star. Right. Because yeah. they don't have their own. And so they give him a big standing ovation. But then he goes to the bench and he crowns himself. And I'm like, come on, LeBron, it's 
Brooklyn, that they are. I knew that would bother you. 29 and 46. <laughs> 29 and 46. As soon as I saw him do that, I said, Skip, will have a real problem well, well, with that. Well, who right. shouldn't? I, I mean, seriously, did you ever see Michael Jordan crown himself? Did, did he ever crown <laughs> but, himself? But, but who needs to crown yourself? Well, why, why, why don't you just let people crown you? You don't have to crown I, yourself. I get it. Right? I mean, I get Come it. On. Yeah, you I mean, do. You know it. I'm right about this. I didn't say he was wrong. Right. Okay, thank you. I didn't say he was wrong. I didn't All say he right. was right either. So if Ben Simmons had been healthy this year, that's a matchup for LeBron because Ben Simmons is like 6'10", and he's long, and he's agile, and that would have been you, – you do that kind of work against Ben Simmons, you, you've got something to talk about. But they don't have anybody who can guard him. So he went off. And Keyshawn, I yes. thought of you last night because – my first thought was, man, I want to see this in the postseason. Yeah, I just do. I, I want to see it in fourth quarter. I want to see a fourth quarter like that against Denver because I had to sit through. I, I picked him to beat Denver last year. But he wasn't doing this, Skip, last year at this time of the season. He wasn't doing what he's been doing for the Lakers. He just wasn't. So you heard what Skip Bayless had to say. First of all, I want to react to what LeBron did before I react to Skip himself. Um... I was watching it yesterday, and I have to be honest with you guys. You guys know I'm not a LeBron fan in any stretch of the imagination, but by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, what he did yesterday was truly incredible <clears throat> uh, for what he did, right? Regardless of the GOAT debate and all of that stuff, you know, there were there were guys yesterday that scored over 40. Luka Doncic scored 47. Paul George scored 41. LeBron scored 41. So if we're just looking at it from a from a performance standpoint from a player, it's incredible regardless. But the fact that he's older, uh, it was truly remarkable. And what else was remarkable was the following. The fact that he was doing something that he customarily doesn't do, which is he was hitting a lot of threes. As a matter of fact, when he hit 12, uh, excuse me, 12, uh, nine threes, I thought he was going to break Kobe's uh, 12, 12 point when Kobe hit 12 threes. And I thought he was going to break that record. Uh, although it was already beaten, broken by, I think uh, J.R. Smith tied it. And I think Clay Thompson broke it. I could be wrong. So from LeBron's standpoint, <clears throat> from an individual game, it was absolutely impressive. Now people that say, hey, listen, it was against the Brooklyn Nets. There weren't really anyone to defend him. I get I get that. But still, um, the performance was the performance. It was, it was incredible. Now, in terms of Skip saying what he said, uh, it surprises me. Because Skip has always been one of these people like Jordan, 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 Jordan. But I guess as he's getting older, uh, he started to give LeBron James his flowers. But if you heard, if you listen towards the end, he also stood his ground. He's like, well, yeah, it was against the Nets, though. Right. So Skip, Skip ain't going to give it up to LeBron 100 percent. Right. That's just going to be Skip. He's not going to give it up to LeBron 100 percent. But to hear him say that about his guy, Jordan, to basically say, listen, you know, this is more impressive than anything Jordan was doing at that age. Uh, it was surprising to hear it come from Skip. It was, if it was somebody else, I don't think it would be such a big surprise. But to hear it come from Skip Bayless's mouth to say, listen, even Jordan couldn't do this. I think that was uh, truly, truly, uh, uh, you know, noteworthy. So for those of you guys, I want to know what you guys think about this. As you guys know, LeBron James had an absolutely stellar night last night. He scored 41 points, no, 40 points against the Brooklyn Nets, hitting nine out of his 10 three-point attempts, hitting 13 out of his 17 shots that he attempted in shooting, what, 76.5% from the field and also hit 83% of his free throws to go with like seven rebounds uh, in that game. And it was a pretty, pretty impressive game, but you had to see it, right? Because some of those shots he was hitting... <clears throat> hit a pull up three then he was going towards uh the basically falling out of bounds hit another three fading out of bounds and he hit another three a pull up step back three it was just absolutely incredible right absolutely incredible and i saw it and i was like man this is incredible it's incredible from a, in terms of a basketball uh performance it was so what happened i knew that everyone was going to be talking about this today so what happened i came across a segment uh from espn's get up and during this segment it was featuring mike greenberg uh, Mike Greenberg, Jay Williams, and who's the third person? And Tim Legler. <laughs> Tim Legler, the person we're talking about. So they were kind of going through what was happening in the, you know, in the association last night, and it got to LeBron's um, performance. So as Mike Greenberg was talking, <clears throat> he got to the point where he essentially was like, you know, um, we all saw what LeBron did and this and this and this, and I feel like we don't appreciate LeBron enough. And to my surprise... Tim Legler actually checked him for saying that. But what I like most about what Tim Legler did was 
Not only did he push back on him, he pushed back with a concrete explanation uh, about what he meant for disagree, you know, by disagreeing with him. So for those of you who didn't hear what Tim Legler had to say, uh, we want to play it for you now as, as he was responding to Mike Greenberg, and I'm going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to uh, Tim Legler here, kind of checking Mike Greenberg like, wait a minute, we do give LeBron a lot of props. Take a listen to that. 40.7 rebounds, five assists. There you see it. Players with 40-point games since turning 39. The aforementioned Carl Malone's on the list, but only Jordan did it more times. He did those as a wizard. Here's LeBron doing these as a Laker. And you know what? LeBron James gets plenty of attention. I'm not going to suggest that he doesn't, but sometimes I think what he's doing right now is actually underappreciated. Let's just bear in mind, I mean, LeBron James is 39 years old. And right now, like I just got my um, a notice, you know, we have our ballots for first team, second team, third team, all NBA. Like he's certainly going to be on one of those teams. He's playing at an all NBA level at the age of 39. Do you know how many players in history have done that? Zero. Yeah. It has never happened before. So the point, uh, Jay, is that for all of his accomplishments, the longevity and playing at this level at this age. I think this is going to be a big deal on his resume. Green, the thing that stands out for me, obviously, as a podcaster, J.J. Reddick called Mind Games, is how surgical and tactical he is. Yeah. I, I think that's the thing. That, uh, look, the body, him knocking down shots, that's that's an alien-like form, okay? I, I understand that. But the, the understanding of the game and how he's able to execute that level of understanding, that comprehension, is what really makes him stand apart other than different players. He, the game is just so simplified. You know, we used to have a thing called kiss when you're younger. Keep it simple, stupid. We right. used to say it all the time. He is the epitome of that with superhuman powers. It's what makes him special. Yeah, I've said this about Jokic before, and I'll say the same thing about LeBron. Everything that he does is purposeful. There's no wasted energy or motion with anything that he does on a basketball court. So that helps him at this age be able to do the things that he does because it'd be difficult if he played a different game where he pounded the ball too much and isoed a lot, took a bunch of tough mid-range jump shots at that age, be very difficult to be this efficient. He has simplified his game to the things that he loves to do. He defies everything we thought we knew about what you could do as a basketball player yeah. this long. He's defied all of that. There's no question about it. Is he underappreciated? I'm not sure about that because we, we give him appreciation, I feel like, almost every day. Yeah. I think the only thing that would maybe, for some people, satisfy that would be if you finally said, He's better than Jordan. That's like the one thing left for him because I think he gets plenty of attention and accolades and appreciation. So, yeah, underappreciated was a bad choice of words by me. I don't know that people realize the historical yeah. significance of yeah, him doing I, this I agree with at that. this yeah. age. I agree with that. Look, he came into the league with Carmelo Anthony and Dwayne Wade. Carmelo's in commercials. Dwayne Wade owns a team, for crying out loud. And LeBron is still one of the 10 best players in the world. So you heard what Tim Legler uh, had to say. Why do I like what Tim Legler said? I think Tim Legler summed it up in a way that I myself have never done it and I don't think anyone else has done it, which was the following. He said, listen, it's not about us not giving LeBron his props because we do. All the, I mean, In this case, we're talking about ESPN. Uh, that's all ESPN does. The ESPN is a LeBron James network. That's all they do all day long, right? That's all you see them do on social media with their accounts. You see Bleach Report do it. You see, you see countless accounts do this all the time, right? So for Tim Legler to say that, I think he was 100% correct to point that out. But then he says something else. He said, I think well, by you saying that, what you, I think what these people that say you don't give LeBron enough credit is that they want you guys, the people that, are not, that they feel is not giving the, uh, the, the credit, to say he's better than Michael Jordan. And I think that Tim Legler hit it on the head, hit the nail on the head. I had never considered it that way. But the fact of the matter is that's what he means. Because when you say LeBron doesn't get his props, I, I, I truly sit down and wonder what these people are talking about. LeBron gets his props all day long. From people, former athletes doing podcasts, JJ Redick, uh, uh, Gilbert Arenas, you have those guys doing it. Uh, you have people on television like Nick Wright. You have the Shannon Sharps of the world. You have the Keyshawn Johnson of the world. Now you just have Paul Pierce jumping on the train. You have, you have Kendrick Perkins. You have Jay Williams. You have Mike Greenberg. You have all of these people, uh, Chris Broussard, all of these guys that give LeBron his props. So when he says that, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, he is right when he says he wants these guys to say he's, the, because this is the main thing. I think... 
LeBron fans want LeBron to be the GOAT. And if you want your favorite player to be the GOAT, no problem. No problem. There's some Kobe fans that think Kobe's the best ever or right behind you. No problem. I think where you run into complications is when you now start pushing for other fans to now adopt your line of thinking. And that's where it's just never going to happen. The majority of basketball fans are not going to say that LeBron is better than Jordan. And I think what's going to continue to happen is LeBron fans are going to say you guys are hating. Because now some of them are saying, oh, like Michael Beasley recently, y'all are holding on to the past. It's like, nah, they don't agree. They saw what they saw. It's like, we don't agree. Like, no, these guys, I don't think any of these guys that say LeBron is not the GOAT. I don't, I've never really heard. Well, some people do, but the vast majority of them, including myself, never said LeBron was a bad player. I have LeBron in my top five, believe it or not. And I don't know how you're a bad basketball player in, in somebody's top five. But to then say... For, but to then have me push back on these guys when they say he's a goat and then you call me a hater nah it's not nah we're not we're not going for that we're not nobody stops you guys from having your position we push back on it because we're not going for it we like we, if you want to say he's a goat fine but we're gonna push back and be like nah nah he's not the goat he's not better than jordan we don't we're not we're not we're not riding with you guys on that and if that's considered not giving them his props then you then it's going to be what's going to be then i guess it's going to be forever and ever that we're not giving him his props because that's too much you come on you're not going to force it down somebody's throat if he's your guy if you think he's the goat have at it have at it but don't expect other people to feel like he's the goat i think kobe's one of the three greatest players of all time but that don't mean you gotta agree with me all i said was i believe he's one of the three and i'm willing to argue anyone about it that's what i said it wasn't that oh you know uh yeah uh you must agree with me nah i'm gonna argue with you though but in this thing of you must agree i think you bugging like oh it's not gonna go down like that because most people don't feel like that is a legitimate debate LeBron fans do. That's your right. But this thing of I must say is a go. Man, nah, man you y'all better miss me with that one. As you guys know, the Western Conference right now, in terms of the 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 playoff picture, is absolutely heating up. And as a matter of fact, I was going to post about this last night on the community section of the channel, but I didn't. Uh, but right now, if we look at the Western Conference standings, right. Let's just go from uh, 10. You have the Warriors at number 10. You have the Lakers at number 9. You have the, <clears throat> the Phoenix Suns at number 8. And you have the Sacramento Kings at number 7. Those are going to be the four playing teams, at th th most likely, right? Unless something happens with the Pelicans. The Pelicans seem to be safe right now. Uh, they're the number 6 seed. So I was just thinking to myself, like, wow, this is going to be very, very exciting. Right? And I can't wait to see how that's going to play out. So what happened? Yesterday, there was a game in the association between the Los Angeles Lakers and uh, the Brooklyn Nets. And in that game, LeBron James absolutely went off and had one of his most efficient games in his NBA career, scoring 40 points on 76.5% shooting from the field, 83% from the free throw line, and shooting 90% uh, from the three-point line. It was truly amazing. So what happened? I knew today on ESPN First Take, that Shannon Sharp was going to come on there because he usually comes on there on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I knew that after this performance, they were definitely going to discuss this. So what happened today on Undisputed? They were talking about this. I mean, I on ESPN first take. Uh, they were talking about this very thing. And then, of course, Shannon took it to the point where, as he always does. Oh, and you know what? You know, there's another player that never looked as good as this, but I ain't going to say his name is Michael Jordan and blah, 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 blah. Now, the backdrop of the conversation was. Is this going to be the Lakers' last dance? Why? Because after the game, during a post-game interview, LeBron was questioned about it. He said, I don't have much time left. So they're talking about that. Shannon essentially was saying, no, nah, I don't think it's going to be the last run because LeBron is going to be just as good next year. And then Stephen A. Smith jumped in and was like, bro, <clears throat> this is absolutely going to be the last dance because this will be the last year LeBron James will ever have a chance to win an NBA championship. And Shannon Sharp, look, he looks so hurt. So what we want to do is we want to play this exchange for you now. And we're going to come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to this exchange here. 
I saw the brother drop over 40 when he was 40. Yeah, I don't know no, what you're talking that. about. I did so that's say number that. one. I did number say two, that. When, when he probably it. took his 40 <laughs> shot. I, I answered your question. That's number one. Number two, for somebody that's so bloviating about how to go, I don't see no. Hey, you know what? How come you only been to two games this year? You only been to a couple of games this year. I wonder why. Number three, when you're talking about the gesture and all of that other stuff, you have a whole lot of time, not just with Shea Shea, but with Nike. Y'all do a hell of a job with that stuff. Don't, don't even stop with me, okay? People taking notes from you right now. I ain't, that's a compliment, my brother. Don't even worry about it. But here's the deal, Shannon. I'm going to tell you this. And you didn't bring this up, so I'm going to bring it up for you because I know you leave these things out. Because, see, I know you well enough to know you know what you're talking about. You also know what to leave out because you're slick like that. But it's okay. I'm what here happened? for it. The Los Angeles Lakers have won six of their last seven games. They're 18 and 8 since February 1st, tied for the fifth best record in the NBA during this stretch, right? Very, very impressive. Wouldn't you say, Christine? Pretty I'd solid. say so. They're still a ninth seed. They're still a ninth seed despite that, okay? Not to mention the fact that they're playing. Bet they're playing 500 ball against the top six seeds in the Western Conference. What I'm saying to you is this question is relevant, Shannon, because here's what I'm trying to brace you for. The end is near in terms of your GOAT ever winning the championship again, unless he planning on leaving Tinseltown. You understand what I'm saying? And let's not forget the acting, because he did a great, great job in the movie Trainwreck. He was fabulous in the movie hmm. Trainwreck. You know, LeBron did some acting there, too, all right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah he's doing a lot of things to prepare himself post, like all of that <laughs> other. And he still got money, enough money. He don't ever have to work another day in his life. But here's the point, Shannon. When you look at those other teams within the Western Conference, by the way, who are all considerably younger, by the way, who are better, okay, and are standing as figurative and literal roadblocks to whatever aspirations he may have as being a champion again, as long as he's going to stay in L.A. with the Los Angeles Lakers, there's nothing foreshadowing championship on their horizons. So the bottom line is this. This is my opinion. This is the last dance. With LeBron James playing the way that he's playing, I don't expect him to be better next year than he is this year. I you expect him to be worse? I'm not saying that, but I said I okay. don't expect him to be better. I'm not expect I would not disrespect him like that. He's too great for me to assume that because we've seen him defy father time and odds for so long. But I don't expect him to be better. I damn sure don't expect the rest of his crew to be better. And so I'm looking at the Los Angeles Lakers, and I'm like, yo, the time is now because guess what? Oklahoma City ain't going to get worse. Minnesota ain't going to get worse. One. Denver ain't going to get worse. Dallas ain't going to get worse. That's the only I, team I'm I, concerned I, about. Who? The Nuggets. Okay. I, but that's what I'm saying. If you don't do it this year, what you think your chance is going to be next year and beyond? This is it. That's why I'm saying this question is relevant. Because to me, what I'm seeing from LeBron and what I'm seeing from the Lakers, this is it. It don't get much better for you moving forward. So you heard the exchange between the two gentlemen. What's my thoughts on this? First of all, I think Shannon Sharp has the hope every Laker fan has. And uh, I know there are a lot of Laker fans, which is every year you think your team is going to win the championship. Every year. Uh, and if the Lakers win three games in a row, it's a wrap. They're going to win it all four games in a row. It's over. They're going to go. They're going to go two championships back to back. And if they win five, man, we about to three beat. I know this, right? Because I read a lot of the comments. I see how uh, they kind of react to certain things on social media. So I get that. But Stephen A. Smith brought up a good point, which is where LeBron James and the Lakers find themselves in the Western Conference picture and in the league overall where, where they are. If you look at the NBA right now, <clears throat> few things are happening. There are a lot of up and coming teams that are just getting better every year. If you look at the West, you have the Oklahoma City Thunder. Some people are not picking them if they play the Lakers in the first round because of experience. Well, you can't hold that excuse against you. won't be able to hold that against them for much longer if they get start getting some experience. So you have them. You have the Denver Nuggets, of course, who's Denver, who I think is the, they're the class of the West. Then you have the Timberwolves who are coming with Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, and these guys. Then you have the Clippers who are kind of like in the middle. They're not old, but they're not young. Then you have teams like the Dallas Mavericks. Then you have up and coming teams like the New Orleans Pelicans. Then you go to the East. You have teams like the Boston Celtics, 
waiting for you. You have the Philadelphia 76ers with Ty, uh, Maxi and these guys who look like he's going to be a real player. Uh, also, he's already an all-star. And you have other teams lingering out there like the Milwaukee Bucks. So the, 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 the competition is getting better year after year. And LeBron and these guys are getting older year after year after year. So it doesn't favor them, right? Age starts to kick in. You look at the Golden State Warriors. At one point, they were a dynasty. Now they're getting older, you know? So it becomes tougher for teams like this. You look at the Phoenix Suns. They're also dealing with things like this. So I think Stephen A. Smith makes an astute observation. Now, could the Lakers do something crazy this year? Well, in terms of in the playoffs, if they make it out of the play-in, they most likely will be facing the Thunder, the Nuggets, or the Wolves. Whoever they pull in that first round is going to be tough. They're not going to be any easy outs. The Oklahoma City Thunder are a very, very good team. The Denver Nuggets, well, they're the champs, so you ain't no flukes with them. And then you have the Minnesota Timberwolves. We have to see what Rudy Gobert and those guys, if he's going to be able to be healthy. But then you have other teams, too. Because you still have the Clippers, you still have the Mavericks, you still have the... So, listen, the Western Conference is tough, and it's getting tougher. Now, Shannon and these guys will have a point if the Lakers were the best team, or one of the best teams. They're not. And that's why Stephen A. Smith brought up the point about being the ninth seed. They're not one of the best teams. And if you're not one of the best teams, it's going to be pretty tough. So, this may well be the last stand, because next year LeBron will be 40 years old. You're going to be pretty hard-pressed to win a championship at 40 when you couldn't do it at 39. 